Hello, hello. 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 Um, avoid legal snags by telling people they're being recorded. Mm. Well, there we go. Well, uh, North Dakota, you're okay, because we have a one-way uh, permission law. So, as long oh, as I know it's being recorded, you don't need to know, or vice I, versa. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, in, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I, I think we probably think differently. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Who knows? I hope that that's an alcoholic beverage you're drinking. I no, remember... actually, it's just plain water. <laughs> oh, well, I've got some of that, too. Well, here's, it's, here's to the... It's only 3 p.m. here, so uh, I can't start alcoholic beverages. Plus, I have school tomorrow, so <laughs> oh, okay. got to be good. And you're doing um, in-person teaching? Yes. Um, you know, we have a mask mandate, so I don't have a mask over here, but... You know, I'm okay. teaching through a mask, which is interesting, but okay. it's working. <laughs> oh, good. good. Well, let's move our cameras to the other direction. And okay. I'll put this in my little tripod. I don't so, know why. The tripod is just floppy today. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, it's far for the course. Um, so uh, we decided it seems months ago that we were going to talk about paper <laughs> and um, paper is something that uh, is near and dear to my heart as any as it should be really to any pen user but probably I use a lot more different kinds of paper than you might. I think a, a normal writer might find a stationery that they like and that's it. And they'll buy it and they'll use it again and again and again and they'll, they may never change. Uh, I know that you also write in journals and journals, I think I saw one of your, your things where you said that the journal paper became different is that true? Yeah, it was. Um, I, I I loved uh, Bomo art journals because they yeah. had beautiful covers, and I used them for pens and use for many years. And yeah, uh, and then I started a brand new journal, which was awesome because it was space themed, and I love space. But yeah. uh, the paper was god awful. <laughs> and it was the same company. Yeah, they just uh, yeah. changed their paper without yeah, warning. That's, that's what they do. <laughs> and it's really it really sucks yes <laughs> uh, i i've had that problem with um with a particular company that i would buy bristol board and it was, it was paper that was you made ex expressly for non-bleeding for pen and ink work and i loved their paper it was borden and riley's paper and um they ended up changing the recipe on me and it did absolutely horrible a horrible job so i went back and i could see the the cover had a slightly different color purple in its labeling uh -huh. so i knew that the older brighter purple was the better paper and i bought every single tablet they had and um and i use every square inch of that paper to do drawings and I I use the backs of it. I use, you know, every every element I can use. Oftentimes when I'm drawing something, I'll I all I'm doing is drawing maybe a capital A to scan in someone wanted a different A than I originally did. So I don't have to use a whole page. I can just use a little tiny bit. So anyway, but I've got paper galore. And I'll I'll uh, I'll talk to you about the various kinds and the things that I think about and the things that I discovered and um, uh, and I'm, we're using we were going to use Parker washable blue ink so we'd have the same color but my uh, stationery store didn't have any and I wasn't about to. Uh, order any, so I, I'm using uh, Monteverdi Caribbean Blue, which I've never ever used before. 
and it, it's a very happy turquoisey blue color. I think we're in the same boat because I've been using this uh, Parker Quink. Okay. The box, I, I lost the box, you know, because this yeah. has been sitting on my desk for months. Yeah. But uh, the box is washable blue, but uh, all my viewers have been saying, it's way too dark to be washable blue. And uh, well, memory and their comments all agree because I remember washable blue was very pale and this isn't. So yeah. Well, I think we're both cheating. <laughs> just uh, spill some on you and we'll find out if it's washable. Just <laughs> on, your, on your on your clothes. So um, why don't we trade off back and forth uh, talking about a particular thing that we get um, or that we have to think about when we do, do paper. And we'll just comment. I'll, I'll say something and you can comment on that and maybe your experience is shared and then you can, it'll be your turn to comment and then I'll see if I can fill in my bit. So I'll start. Um, when I'm do doing things for calligraphy, I am being given paper from the couple that are getting married and it can be cranes paper. It can be, uh, all different kinds of paper. Some of it is pearlescent paper, which um, I have a piece of it here somewhere. I found one in my studio and I was going to show you. And of course, now I can't find it. But I'm just going to, I just found it. So let me just show you what this ink does. Here's Crane's Acru, or they're off, the, the lighter color of their two colors. So there you go. <laughs> and then here's their cream color, which I don't know if you can see that there's a difference. I guess you can. Yeah, same, it's showing up really well. Same color ink, same pen. And you can see that that the one on cream is greener than the one on white. So the, the, the ink is transparent to a degree, and that will pick up the color of the paper underneath. And if I were writing it on this one, this is this pearlescent paper. It looks fine now, but it will dry in an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see how different it looks. So it's always... You know, when when I when I tell a a couple that, and they pick out they, if they pick a color, you know that's not black, um, I I tell them that okay, it's going to be a little bit greener or a little bit if it's blue ink they want, you know they they have to deal with the subtle differences that the paper is going to bring to it. Um, this is not fading as much. Oftentimes when I use the pearlescent paper, I'll write with red ink and it turns pink because the little reflective bits of whatever is in there, um, the, the ink doesn't stick to or so it, anyway. So that's that's number one. So what about color for you or white versus off white or what do you, do you have any? I actually uh, usually prefer, you know, if I'm trying to show off an ink, I usually prefer an off-white. Okay. Certain colors seem to look better on white, but most of them, that off-white seems to be better. But, you yeah. know, it's interesting you brought up that pearlescent paper because I yeah. have a pen pal uh, who, who writes to me on all kinds of different random paper. Yeah. And she had one uh, that was pearlescent. I just thought, how did she get it to work with a fountain pen? And yet, you know, it felt like magazine paper. And we know how that is with fountain pen. Yeah. And yeah. yet I tried writing, you know, around the margins of her letter and it worked perfectly. So it was yeah. very, uh, very cool. <laughs> it is, it is an interesting paper. I, it almost feels like I'm writing on emery paper though. So like I'm s scraping away the, the uh, iridium <laughs> as I'm <laughs> writing on it. So I don't, I, I'm always a little afraid that I'm harming the pen by using that paper. 
Yeah, um, I get that. I wondered if it was a coating or, you know, what exactly they do to get that pearlescent quality. It's so. it's actually part of the, I think it's, well, maybe it isn't inside the paper. It's just on the surface. I don't know if it's a, if it's sprayed on or what, but um, so what what is the characteristic that you have to talk about? You well, like you like off white. You, I imagine the camera prefers off white too. White is pretty bright. Yeah, I agree. You know, I uh, for me uh, again, it depends on the function. Yeah. Uh, if, if I'm doing like my novel writing or you know just business like that, I'm not trying to show off an ink and I'm just using black ink and whatever. Uh, yeah. You know, I want it just the ink dries quickly and uh, I'm not worried about the paper. I'm just boom, boom, boom going. Yeah. But if I'm trying to show off an ink, I like it to, uh, I don't want the ink to really soak into the paper. I just want it to, you know, if there's shading, if there's sheening, if there's any of that, I want to be able to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I guess it depends on the function. So a, I, I imagine there are, correct terms for this if i was a paper expert i would know them but a harder uh tighter surface is better than one that's more fibrous and um fuzzy <laughs> i guess you know yeah i think so you know like here's uh oh, oh yes that's that's fuzzy paper yeah, you know, and it, you know, it's bleed. It actually, the, I, I was surprised because I, I, I decided to grab. I was just gonna see if my pens were writing on this stuff, and yeah. uh, it actually does decently well. Yeah, I don't know if you can yeah. see that, I, I can't see my preview real well, but yeah, no, it's it's good. I there's an artist that I follow on Instagram who draws with fountain pens, antique fountain pens, on napkins oh <laughs> and he you know if you hesitate for a second all of your ink is going to be <laughs> sucked into the napkin so he must draw very very quickly but he's able to stop the um you know the pen and then the 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 uh it's like a electron on a, a molecule you know the ball gets bigger the dot and then he moves further and then stops and then the dot starts getting bigger. So he so he actually uses that to his advantage in the drawings he does. But I'll I'll send you some pictures if I can remember who the who the heck he was. Um, I think he's on a Facebook uh, drawing uh, fountain pen drawing with fountain pens page. Um, but it's it is interesting to like you're doing with the newspaper. It is interesting. OK, I've got a paper that is really absorbent but my pen isn't tearing the paper so this is interesting now whether a non-artist would do anything with that you know i don't yeah. know i mean do you yeah. fill out the crossword puzzle with your fountain pen in the newspaper <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll tell you one thing uh I'm thinking of it now, of course, now that I'm all set up to do the video, but uh, I, I know Noodler's Ink had an interesting ink called uh, Blue Nose Bear that took advantage of the feathering of paper. So it would have, you know, kind of a darker center, but then the feathering would be all light colored. Okay. And, uh, yeah, right now I'm thinking, I wish I had a pen inked up with it right now to try a newspaper because I would love to see what it does on this. But I'm impressed with this Parker Quink, whatever mm -hmm. kind of blue it is. There, there is no feathering on this newspaper, yeah. which I was sure there would be. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I'm I I I have lots and lots of sketchbooks, and some of it is on has good paper, some of it has kind of textured paper that isn't very good. Some of it actually has twigs and bark. <laughs> It's part of the paper. It's really crusty paper, handmade paper, and I I'm scared to death to actually use any sort of fountain pen because I'm going to hit a tree branch in it or something. <laughs> but, um, this this was a set that someone gave me, and it's 
a paper that's made in India, and uh, I this really bleeds. It's it's not at all a pleasure to write on. It's very it's textured and it's it's like pulls pulls at the pen. The pen does not want to slide across it. it it's, yeah. it's very unpleasant. And there's a couple of com companies that make uh, uh, paper for letterpress that also had that quality. Uh, Cranes made it for, let it's called Letra, and it was awful, awful, awful. Um, but uh, uh, in my collection of, of of books, I would uh, for drawing in. I would always go to secondhand bookstores and I'd look for ledger books and diaries and old diaries. And the old diaries, pocket diaries, were much much smaller than the diary that you see in the movies. Um, they were about, you know, even smaller than this. Uh, some of them are about the size of a business card and and beautiful smooth paper. And I would uh, buy those and write in them and draw in them. I wouldn't really write in them. I'd just draw on them. So this this is um, this is ledger book paper from 1899. You could just hear the quality and the thickness of that paper. And um, it's so smooth and so it's such a pleasure to to touch the paper the paper has a cool coolness to it and the pen just glides right over it and um whoever owned this sketchbook or this ledger book was making a lot of money in 1900 uh 14 no it was like 44 oh here money brought forward uh $15,363.44 pretty good <laughs> for now let alone night 1899 right so anyway i love old ledger books and some old ledger books are really crappy like I'll just show you one that's crappy. This is an old stenography book tablet. And the paper is Ooh. brittle. It's just, <laughs> it just crumbles. It's really awful. It's so filled with acid that it's, it feels really, really smooth. But the, the pen nib just digs right in and cuts the paper. You know, that's right where the, the pen hit, right there. Okay. So not all old paper is good. Uh, some of it's pretty bad. That's interesting you bring that up because uh, I have an elderly adding machine from like 1914 or something yeah. in my house, and it has a vintage roll of adding machine paper. You know, it, I, I tried to do a video on the adding machine. Oh, basically, yeah. But... Uh, the adding machine caused this gouge here. Oh no! <laughs> but uh, you know, it's just the the paper is falling apart. Yeah, that's that's it's it's awful paper. I mean, that was never meant to last long. The um, and I, I have a bunch of old telegrams that I found in the dumpster at uh, Madison, Wisconsin, at the Historical Society, <laughs> and those that paper is really really bad too full of acid and it's just eating away itself and um but uh i had to take it i had to get them out of the dumpster <laughs> there was there was a rather nasty uh uh david suskind who you are too young to know who he is but he's was a was a newscaster and he had a tv show in the early 60s and one of them was called, uh, it was called Open End, and he sent a telegram to Frank Sinatra asking Frank if he'd be on, and Frank said yes, and then said how much it cost, and then they started having a rather 
bitchy little argument <laughs> back and forth through the tele telegram. So I have that set of conversation between Frank Sinatra and David Susskind. Um, but some uh, old paper, if old paper is yellow, gotten yellowed, it's probably going to be pretty bad to write on. Uh, um, you know, uh, when I started teaching back in, well, 1999, mm -hmm. I was working in this really rural school, even more rural than where I am now, if you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they uh, really had to modernize their whole uh, grading system. So we had to enter uh, semester grades in three different places. It had to go on their report card, which is carbon paper back yeah. then. Uh, had to go on a folder. And then they had these books. You know, they were these bound books with kind of a greenish paper. Yeah. And uh, so you had oh, to yeah. enter them, all the grades in three different places for their transcript, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But those bound books with the greenish paper were ancient, you know, like 1930s, 1920s yeah. type of look. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, even back then, I you know, I wasn't into fountain pens the way I am now. I just had my Parker Vector and I had a Parker frontier i think uh -huh. and uh so i entered all my grades with those it was just a mate i remember just being surprised how good that paper was for my fountain pen yeah but i suppose when they started using these books way back you know when the school was built you know yeah. north dakota so it couldn't have been that long ago probably in the aughts or in the teens yeah they uh would have been making it for quilt pens or fountain pens well they also being that it was a governmental uh, thing and record keeping for, for the government i guess they they got good quality paper and they had them bound i know that ledger books and lab books and court re court recording stenographer books and stuff they are to be they're not to be uh they're all the pages are numbered you can't take a page out without someone noticing that it's gone you don't bind them afterwards and there was a in one of the ledger books i found in the in the dumpster at the historical society in madison it's a beautiful beautiful huge leather and suede bound leather, uh, ledger book with big you know the on the sides of the book where you have the the these raised areas of whatever they are, whatever they're called, <laughs> but but those things that are raised up, you know, um, these were huge, really big book. And the thing was, it was the there, the pages in them were typewritten, and there was there is an actual typewriter that you could buy that would type in a ledger book, a bound ledger ledger book. And it would sit on rollers. You'd put the book on a table, and it was this contraption where you, you know, press down, and the thing would type onto the book. And then, as it's coming up, it would move one space over. The whole typewriter, typewriter huh. would move. Um, it didn't have a carriage. You know, the carriage was the table. So, and. It's really fascinating that that um, you know all all the stuff we had to go through to to make a book be a legal document, even if it's you know when you're handwriting something, it has to be bound first. You know. Great. So. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, I've got here a book. Uh, well, it's an old calculus book from yeah. 1934. Yeah. It doesn't have those ridges like you're talking about, no. but, uh, you know, you just look at the typography and you think about, you know, how exactly did they typeset this back in that time? Right now, you know, nowadays I can typeset all of this with LaTeX or whatever, but uh, back yeah. then, it's and it, kind of it, fun, it, the, uh, the original owner of the book has this whole schedule right here. Yeah, including um, Saturday classes. Oh, and I'm dear. guessing it must have been a military school because we've got inspection here. Okay, yeah, great, cool. Oh, yeah, there we go, military drill. I don't know if you can see that, military yeah. training. So yeah, cool. It's just kind of fun. I, I love those old books. Um, one of the things I have in my house is a typewriter. It's a Hammond multiplex typewriter. 
and it has uh, it's made for mathematicians um, because it has each each uh, character each button you press uh, on one of the typefaces. It has two different typefaces on this machine, and it's early. It's like World War One era, and um, it on one of the typefaces. It had each key you'd press had up to five different characters on it. Upper and lowercase lettering, punctuation, plus mathematical symbols like square root and things like that. And um, it had little tiny numbers to make fractions or uh, uh, whatever the power numbers are called. Uh, exponents. <laughs> Exponents, that's what I, I was thinking. So it can make either numerators or denominators or exponents. And then it had some Greek letters thrown in. And um, so it's really, really amazing that, you know, a typewriter was built for a mathematician back in 1910. Um, well, you can uh, kind of see it like, I don't know. If I can't tell exactly what I'm showing here, but like yeah. these square root symbols, yeah. you can tell, you know, they've got the square root. That's the check mark thing. Yeah. And then the top of it is not quite oh, connected. Cos to cosine it. H V minus one over two. Yeah. Hyperbolic cosines. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have not used those since college. <laughs> well, uh, and now what, what in, in what, how did it help you? find out how long it took farmer brown to uh cultivate his field <laughs> when do you where do you use those things i've been told things like hanging cables because it, it helps to define the curve that the cable i see define the pulled. curve of the cable yeah yeah um so uh go back i is it my turn to talk about no it's your turn now i sort of talked about ledger books <laughs> no we we kind of got off the rails there yeah well that's okay no, I just thought it was interesting. I was looking at the newspaper here before I get to my next paper. Oh, yeah. You know, poor you Betty. I, I kind of feel bad about her, but uh, you know, the I'm I'm surprised by how little of that ink on this side bled through on this yeah. newspaper. Yeah, yeah. But, they do. Uh, Bleeding is uh is an issue that that Toma River paper. There's a little. It's it doesn't really bleed through but because it's so thin you see through it <laughs> yeah it's lovely paper to write on oh I, um on, speaking of that k and e like are they even in business anymore i don't think so but they made some amazing slide rules back in the day they made some amazing slide rules but they also made graph sheets and this is a logarithmic scale graph paper and this is like that toma river paper mm. it's very very smooth and there's you can see through it but it doesn't bleed through it's just too light too far yeah. too thin but i've got reams of this stuff that i got out of the magic dumpster that we have nearby our house <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a place where uh, draper labs would have to store their things for so many years before they could throw them out because they were classified. So every you know, year in May or something, the big dumpsters would be in the building next to us and we would just dive right in and <laughs> find you know things from NASA and things, um, all this great stuff. And one guy was, he was, taking the paper out of these big binders big white binders and uh loose leaf binders and he was taking all the paper and th throwing the covers of the binders back other people were there collecting the copper wiring from things and anyway the the, the binders i wish i had taken them because they were so funny they were launch codes for the anti-ballistic missile system <laughs> <laughs> things that things that uh, the Russians would have paid a lot of money for at one point. Oh, that's interesting. I when I used to live, well, I was talking about that school I used to work at. They uh, 
they were surrounded by nuclear missile sites. <laughs> oh, neat. And, uh, you know, if you, if you ever visit the State Museum here in North Dakota, there, there's a whole exhibit on those uh, yeah. missile sites. And they've got, you know, the whole launch controller and everything. And uh, <laughs> just kind of fun to look at and think, wow, we were yeah. that close to nuclear war at one time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And now they're in the dumpster yeah. uh, because we've got other things that we can worry about now. <laughs> uh, um, so anyway, paper, paper is fun. And um, uh, what about writing in the journals? How does that change? Does that do you? Well, I'll tell you the big thing think for me when this you... is uh, not my favorite journal uh, i don't yeah. know if i want to show any personal pages because it's yeah. a personal improvement journal okay. but you know the big thing for me that i i like with these is yeah. it's all there you, you can't reorganize the pages you're not going to lose them yeah you can't just kind of misplace them yeah but at the same time you know you're writing along you think oh wait i want to insert something here between these two pages and like whoops no yeah. i can't <laughs> Well, you, it's not easy. You, you, what you, what, what you need to do, uh, Wasky is to, uh, do what, uh, you sometimes see in, uh, in books where printed books had big margins for marginalia for, so our, uh, you know, critics and philosophers could write their little bits on the side. So if you were to, to um, to to give yourself a wider margin, you can you can always edit and add things in the margins, but you can't really add another page. No, I uh, I'm trying to dig out here. I've got a book here. It's exactly what you're talking about. But it's kind of stuck in the. Okay, there it came. I have a slipcase. So I don't know if you know who Richard Feynman is. Oh sure, sure. My God, I love him. But. Uh, you know, check out that page. Yeah, All kinds of space of, for notes. Yeah, I love I love when they do that. When yeah, but, and then you know he puts in the nice diagrams. And if you yeah. know who Edward Tufte is, he oh uh, sure yeah he 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 uh, took a lot of inspiration from these books. Oh, did he? Yeah, he he's um, I love his his books, and he he couldn't get the book publishers to do it good enough for him. So he had them done privately and he sold them out of his garage for a while. I don't know if he still does that, <laughs> but, but uh, he's, he's an odd one. Uh, he, he, he's, he spoke at uh, one of my college or grad school room roommates is a uh, housemates is a uh, teacher in Williams College, and he spoke there. And Colin, the the teacher, who's a very um, an award winning math teacher in college, uh, because of the way he teaches, he'll dress up as uh, Mel Slugbait, the secondhand car dealer, to describe calculus some calculus thing <laughs> so he'll, come, he'll come to class dressed up as this and anything that we can do as a teacher that will make a student smile helps them remember things i think and um uh and anyway to colin who's kind of an entertainer mentioned uh at the dinner afterwards for tufty um that he found his lecture very entertaining and Tufty was so incensed. He said, I am not an entertainer. And he stormed off into a corner and continued to eat all by himself. And he, um, he ate with his fingers <laughs> rather than <laughs> using silverware because silverware is not clean enough for him. <laughs> so whatever. I like his books though. Um, so do you find, let me ask you this about, about the books, though. Do you find the physicality of the book above the table to be a hindrance to you or bother you in any way? You know, it really doesn't. But uh, 
you know, one of the things I've discovered, I, you know, I have this desk that folds out from the wall because, well, you know, I live in a really small house, so it makes yep. sense for me. Yep. Um, it's very rare that I actually sit at this desk and write in a notebook. You know, more likely if I'm writing in a notebook to be sitting at, at just on the couch or yep. wherever on a bus heading back from yep. Science Olympiad. And, uh, you know, when you're sitting in a bus, it really doesn't matter. You know, you can just kind of write along if, you know, you're just holding in your hand or in your lap yeah. and yeah. you don't care. Yeah, that's, it's, I, 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 um, I, I'm, I have mixed feelings about writing in a book um, and not so much writing, it's drawing, you know, because sometimes I'm starting a, starting a line down here at the bottom and it's going that way really, really fast. And if I if I hit the edge of a book with my palm, then I, I can't do it. So I have the most freedom to move my hand around when the piece of when it's one piece of paper on a table. Um, but I also, you know, write uh, when I go out sketching with the urban sketchers, I'll I'll bring uh, a stack of heavy cardstock paper and I'll just draw on that and move it over and draw on the next one. And so it's all, I sometimes find it that book hitting me right here, a bother. And I was just yeah. wondering if you, if you did. Well, let's be fair. This is my desktop. Yeah. If you saw me trying to write Tomoe River paper yeah. on this, yeah. I, I poked a few holes through the paper because <laughs> yeah. of these yeah, we slats. <laughs> we don't want to do that. We don't want to poke holes in it. Um, one of the papers that I've had fun with, which again, um, let's see if I can find find one here. Here it is. There's a blue one. Uh, my neighbor, I, I live in a building with a bunch of artists, and some of the artists are. Um, printers, uh, letterpress printing, and some of them are watercolorists, and some of them are architects. So I've got paper from all over the place. And one of the architects was throwing out all of these California paint samples. And I thought, well, I'm going to do something on this. And this this paper, it's like covered in, in um, paint or I don't know what it is, what the surface is, silk screened, I think, is what it is. And uh, so it takes a really long time to dry. Sometimes the ink beads up on it. And it's neat because, well, you can see how the, how it's beading up here. But it's really, really fun to, to try, try something that's entirely foreign to my thinking. And saying, okay, now I'm stuck with this paper, what can I do with it? And it's kind of fun to to do that. You know, I wouldn't want to write a novel using this stuff, but it's fun to do a drawing on it. Um, what am I making? Who knows? <laughs> An alien. I've been using the names of the paints to inspire the drawing and um i don't know where they are right now i have a pile of them somewhere um what else can i tell you here about paper um or what can you tell me about paper <laughs> you you like you you i i see the ones that you sent me you or showed me just now you have you write with paper that have lines and don't have lines and is, is there a preference um you know i'll be honest my actual preference is dot paper especially if the dots are really faint you know, especially with, once you write on it you don't really need the lines or anything so yeah. uh, having really faint dots they kind of disappear once you write all over sure sure okay so the the Rhodia paper is... Oh, that's a decent one. You know, I don't use Rhodia paper a whole lot, but yeah, that is a decent paper. I got some clear Fontaine paper at a pen show because I didn't bring paper with me. 
and um, this is French lined or something. It has, you know, there's one, two, three, there's four, there's five spaces, uh, equidistant spaces that are supposed to help you know how to write your letters, but I've never figured out how that works. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the French line. I, I tried like a sheet of it or something, but uh, yeah. I did not like it. It was just too constraining. Yeah. Well, I like this paper. It's very, very smooth and it doesn't bleed at all. Um, look at that. Who, who in the world wrote that? I wonder. <laughs> they had a pen show. They weren't using one of my pens. Um, it is fun seeing what how people write on my books at a pen show. Let's see. Nail Jonathan Pierre Gustafson. Someone wrote my name. I don't know who that was. Um, Tallulah, Tallulah Bankhead. So what? Uh, do we have any parting words for our our people? Do we have anything else we wanted to say about paper? You know, I've got a interesting. Let me find it here in my stack of stuff here. I piled up a, or maybe I didn't pile this one up. Oh wow, I'm using it underneath my Tomoe River paper. Okay. So, uh, you know, I discovered this is a Maroman paper. It's a Japanese brand. Sure. Uh-huh. Well, what's interesting is it says B5 to B4. Okay. So when I first saw that, I was like, what? So I had to buy it just to find out what it meant. Okay. So, you know, it's it's ordinary B5 size paper like this. Okay. But then it opens up. Oh. And I just found that so interesting, you know, and, that, and that's not something I use a lot. Mm -hmm. It'll fit in a binder. Uh, I don't want to show the front cover because this is some personal stuff, but yeah. I'll show the back of it. Yeah. It fits in a binder like this. Sure. And yet you can open it up and you've got a big, wide, you know, I, I always like uh, these big horizontal. Is this important? Nope, nothing, nothing here is important. Okay. I like these big horizontal sheets. I've got a whole tablet. Of, of, uh -huh. I forget what, what is this? Barren fig paper. Yeah. You know, I always like to just write all over them. And yeah. this is kind of awesome for, you know, sketching out a huge idea on onto paper. Mm -hmm. And yet it fits in a nice binder. And it's nice. so silly, but it it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> B4 to B5. Yeah. Um, um, cool. Uh, I we'll do this let's um let's I'll, I'll i'll write goodbye uh nicely with my blue i'm using a conklin desk pen good bye i hate words that end in e you know, the, the Pierre Gustafson speed test, um, I I don't know if you still use it when you do your first impressions or your single pen reviews, but um, I don't know whether you need to do that anymore, though I appreciate if you do. Um, it, the, the new pens that, that you're, the new pens you're showing that you're writing with I think they all work pretty well um, for standard writing um, that you're doing. Uh, I think they really only skipping, I think doesn't happen in this kind of geography. But if you've, you're making a line that goes, you know, 10 inches across the page, then then you might want to know whether it can pass that test. But um, it's an interesting test to use. Um, 
So uh, do we want to say goodbye with our faces too or not? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, let's do this. And there's my fate. Okay, give me a second here to... Oh, my, pen's, my phone's upside down here. <laughs> okay. Oh, now you uh, got to see all my tripods. <laughs> okay. All right. So say goodbye to to our our ourselves and our pals, and uh, let's think about what we want to talk about next time. Whatever that is, we'll we don't have to talk about it now, but um, soon we'll send an email back and forth or something. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, uh, whoops, I guess. Oh, forgot. I'm still kind of wampus because the oh, that's okay. Is sagging. I'll be. <laughs> I will be oppositely wampus. <laughs> so, um, well, good. Well, let's let's uh, say goodbye, wave goodbye to our fans, and write your answers below. <laughs> Tell us what papers you like, and um, or give us suggestions of what about what you think we can talk about and i'll stop the recording three two one stop